Good morning, students. So we are going to be starting with week one, lesson one, which is basically the revision of what we were taught in SS1. So we'll be starting with the standard form. We want to see how we can express numbers in standard form. Please kindly note, to revise this, the general form of expressing numbers in standard form is A times 10 raised to power N. Please take note. A has numbers between 1 to 10. It can be an integer and it can be in decimal form. While this N, this N can either be positive or negative. I mean positive integer or negative integer. This N is going to be positive integer depending on where you are moving the decimal point to. When you are moving the decimal point to the left hand side, the N is going to be positive. But when you are moving the decimal point towards the right hand side, it's going to be negative. Let's look at an example to demonstrate that. Now, let's look at this first question now. You want to express 374.5 in standard form. So, you move the decimal point. Please note, the decimal point must be between the first number and the second number. So, we move the decimal point. One, two. So, we stop. It's now between the first number and the second number. So, we are going to have it to be 3.745 times 10 raised to power 1, 2. Raised to power 2. Now, when you look at this, Look at this. This is our N now. It's positive. Why is it positive? Because we move the decimal point towards the left hand side. So it's positive integer this time around. So this is the number expressed in standard form. Example two. We want to express 4,321 in standard form. So the decimal point is here. So we count. One, two, and three. So we stop. So we are going to have the answer to be 4.321 times 10 raised to power 1, 2, 3. 3. It's still positive. Why? Because we move the decimal point toward the left hand side. Now let's look at the third example. Look at the decimal point. Remember I said the decimal point must be between the first number and the second number. So now let's move the decimal point. 1, 2. So we stop. That will be 3.1 times 10 raised to power minus 2. It's now negative. Why? Because we move the decimal point towards the right hand side. So this is 1 and 2. So we have it to be minus 2. Let's look at example 4. Look at the decimal point. So it has to be between the first number and the second number. So we count. 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we stop. That will be 1.93 times 10 raised to power minus 4. Since we counted 4 times, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's going to be minus 4. Negative because we are still going towards the right hand side. Now, look at this. This is 4. 4 is standing alone. 4 is standing alone. So it's going to be 4 times 10 raised to power 0. Because the decimal point is here. The decimal point is already between the first number and any other number that should be placed here. So we don't need to move it anymore. So it's going to be 4 times 10 raised to power 0. Remember, 10 raised to power 0 it will still give you 1. So your first still remains the same. So this is how to express any integer that stands alone in standard form. Now, let's look at this last example. This is 500 in standard form. So we count 1, 2. So we stop. That will be 5.0 times 10 raised to power 2. Positive this time around again because we are moving towards the left hand side to the number. All right, so these are the examples on standard form. Let me give you some exercise to try. Look at the first exercise, the first question here. Express 
403.45 is standard form. And also try to express this number, number two also, in standard form, and also number three in standard form. I believe with this, um, um, with this explanation, you should be able to express these numbers in standard form, and at least it must have given you a, um, an introduction, a revision to the standard form. Thank you so much.